Schneider's Bakery episodes are like Newton's Third Law. For every episode, there is an equal and opposite episode. Meaning, every time there's an episode that brings up a concept and does it poorly, there's another episode somewhere out there in the Schneiderverse that does the same concept way better. I cover a lot of bad episodes on the bottom of the bakery, and I need a place to talk about episodes that aren't quite as bad. Not every episode feature here is going to be a great episode, or even necessarily a good episode, but I want to talk about other episodes that do the same things that those bad episodes do, but a lot better. It's no secret that a lot of episodes' plots and concepts get reused in other episodes on other shows that are made by Schneider's Bakery. Why is this? Well, perhaps because one team can only come up with so many ideas, and seeing as they stick together as a production crew instead of splitting up and working with new talent constantly, there is going to be a tendency for there to be a lot of things that are rehashed. Especially when Dan the Man himself writes a lot of these episodes. There's only so many ideas that one person can have in his head. Now, I'm not defending this because, well, at the point in which you start to repeat yourself, you should probably either retire or try something entirely different. Anyway, the point of this series is to both celebrate some of the better material that the company has churned out and also show how bizarre it is that they can manage to do a concept right one time and then just completely screw it up another time. Go figure that one out. How do you know how to write something well in the past and then screw it up later on? Maybe in an attempt to not blatantly copy everything, you just copy the main plot and then screw up in all the wrong places? I don't know. So I'm going to cover the bizarro version of every episode I've covered on the bottom of the bakery and it's going to happen in order two. Meaning we're going to start with I Meet Fred. Would you believe me if I told you that I Meet Fred had an almost identical plot to an episode that aired one month earlier and only came two episodes before it in the production order? Sounds pretty bizarre, right? Well, it's true. I Kiss is an episode where Freddy's secret of having never kissed a girl gets revealed over the airwaves of iCarly by Sam, prompting Freddy to be relentlessly made fun of at school and feel miserable. Pretty similar to how Freddy not liking Fred gets revealed over by Carly, and he gets relentlessly made fun of at school and feels miserable because of it. In fact, if you'll allow me to put on my tinfoil hat for a second, I would just like to propose a theory that maybe, just maybe, the script for I Kiss was actually reused for I Meet Fred. Maybe the decision to have Fred in an episode was made last minute, and they didn't have enough time to write a whole nother script, so they just took I Kiss and modified it just a little bit to fit Fred a little more. It would explain why I Meet Fred is such a terrible story and how the two episodes are very similar in production order. I have no evidence and no proof, and I wouldn't be surprised if I was wrong on this, but I just thought I'd throw that idea out there. If I Meet Fred is a disgustingly burnt rhubarb tart, then I Kiss is like a bumbleberry pie. What, you don't know what a bumbleberry pie is? Okay, it's a pie that contains multiple kinds of berries and sometimes rhubarb and it tastes really sweet. It's totally something I already knew about and not something that just came up when I searched for sweet pies that contain rhubarb. So the episode starts off with Freddy being afraid of Sam, who busts through Carly's door handcuffed to Gibby. Turns out Sam put a dead fish in Freddy's locker, and to get back at her, Freddy handcuffed her to Gibby. And already we're off to a good start. The simple fact that Freddy is able to get back at Sam means that this rivalry is just that, a rivalry. It's not a one-sided thing in this episode. Sure, Sam started it by putting a dead fish in Freddy's locker, but Freddy actually fought back here. It also makes what Sam is about to do later in the episode Episode a little bit more justifiable, seeing as this is a prank war that's escalating and not something she just does to Freddy out of the blue. Anyway, Carly and Sam go see this really girly chick flick, The First Kiss, which segues them and Freddy to have a conversation about who their first kiss was. See how natural the dialogue is here? Compared to a lot of other Schneider's Bakery episodes where everything just feels so forced, so unnatural, this is a great way to start the discussion that leads into the episode. Plus, The First Kiss isn't something they bring up and drop either, it's the basis for a sketch later on in iCarly. So after Sam leaves, Carly convinces Freddy to tell her who his first kiss was. And it turns out, he hasn't had his first kiss. Well, aside from the girl he dated last season, but that apparently didn't count because the story wouldn't work otherwise. Anyway, Sam's right about to enter the room as he says this, leading her to overhear it and him not knowing that she knows. This then leads into a scene of Carly and Spencer talking about the subplot, which I'll get into later, which means that Sam overhearing Freddy 
Freddy's confession is a little bit of a cliffhanger. The episode actually gives you a little breathing room with that to wonder what's going to happen next. And when we get back to the A-plot, it involves showing an iCarly episode where Carly and Sam are showing their fake movie trailer that was presumably inspired by the first kiss. I have to say, it's actually a pretty funny satire on those really cheesy, cliche teen movies. Though I am kind of wondering who they got to be the narrator and how they got all those camera angles, and I'm... I'm overthinking it. So after that, out of the blue, Sam just says, hey, by the way, Freddy's never kissed a girl, and then walks off, leaving Carly looking like a deer in the headlights and Freddy just absolutely floored. Freddy goes into school the next day and predictably everyone makes fun of him. And even though it is in an over-the-top comedic way, having little girls taking pictures of him and having vaguely British teacher come and announce how Freddy hasn't kissed anyone, at the same time, Freddy is portrayed rather realistically. He is really sad at this, and Carly is genuinely concerned about Freddy. She's not concerned about the reputation of the show. She's not joining in and making fun of him or taking pot shots, she seems actually concerned. And this is important, because after some more B-plot, we get something that I don't think I have ever seen in any Schneider's Bakery episode ever. This may not be the only time that it ever happens, but it is so very rare that I feel like we need to take a moment to just observe it. There is a solid minute of the episode that does not feature any laugh track. No cheering, no awing, no ooing, nothing. Just a minute of dialogue. And that dialogue being Carly telling Sam how much she's ruined Freddy's life, how she made him miserable and there's nothing she can do to make it up to him. She went too far and it's not right. It's unbelievable, right? The episode actually acknowledged how horrible Sam can be. Carly calls her out on it point blank. No distracting laugh track, no cheesy jokes thrown in. The only thing is the irony of Sam saying that Freddy's unprofessional while she eats a meatball and throws it back in the container, but even that's subdued and doesn't have a laugh track. And for what it's worth, I think the scene is actually powerful and effective. I genuinely feel like Carly is really upset with Sam, like this isn't some sort of joke. And based upon the dialogue of saying how he missed weeks of school and won't leave the fire escape, you really get a sense of what the stakes are in the episode, how miserable Freddy is. This isn't played for laughs, this isn't comedic, this is Freddy going through something horrible. And you kind of feel bad for Sam. She doesn't entirely realize how horrible what she did was. And seeing as she is almost never called out for her bad behavior any other time, this must be a sobering realization for her. I know I've spent a lot of time talking about this, but it's really the key to making this whole thing work. Not everything in your episode needs to be funny. You can have a moment or two that is just serious, that is just about the story. And as I talked about in my I Meet Fred review, this sort of thing can be serious. And I think the subject matter honestly deserves a serious moment. Having something secretive about yourself being revealed over the internet is something that unfortunately is happening more and more today with kids and adults. And seeing as this show is actually about the internet and kids in the information age, it makes a lot of sense for them to cover this issue. And it's treated with so much more importance and respect than what Fred does to the iCarly gang in that episode. In that episode, they treat it all like a game. Like, oh, hey, well, yeah, we made Freddy's life miserable, but hey, we got better ratings for iCarly and Fred, so it's all worth it. Nothing else really matters, right? Right? Anyway, Sam goes on iCarly and tells everyone that they need to stop making fun of Freddy because if they don't, they'll have to answer to her. And also, that she's never kissed anyone either. And it's not that unusual to never have been kissed, and probably a lot of iCarly viewers haven't been kissed either, which is not a bad thing to say because yeah, your audience skews young. This is followed up by Sam going to the fire escape where Freddy's been hanging out and having a real talk with him. She apologizes to him and says she really means it. Freddy asks her if she's not gonna mess with him anymore and she says, says, oh yeah, no, of course I'm gonna mess with you, but I'll just apologize every few years to make it up to you. Which, honestly, kinda seems like a cute way to address this. Obviously, they can't completely change Sam's character, although directly after, Freddy asks if she can lighten up just a little bit, and Sam says, no, she can't do that. I feel like that little touch was maybe a bit too far, maybe they just didn't need to include that line, maybe she could've just said, yeah, maybe a little tiny teeny bit, but it is meant to be a joke, and Sam is who she is, so 
I can kind of believe that maybe she would lighten up after this, even if she'd never admit it to Freddy. I mean, if nothing else, this interaction proves that the two of them somewhat care about each other. Even though they have this weird twisted rivalry, they are still friends. And that does make their ups and downs seem a little bit less horrible, because at least it seems like Freddy is choosing to be in the friendship, and the two of them kind of have an understanding with each other. And then the episode ends with Freddy and Sam discussing whether or not they should kiss just to get both of their first kisses over with. After both swearing they'll never tell anyone that this happened, they kiss and for a relatively long time too. They also share a genuinely funny, awkward moment afterwards. And in general, that last scene was kinda sweet. There were a few jokes, but the overall tone was relatively serious. And I gotta say, it's pretty relatable. Sometimes in life, especially when you're about that age, you have these real talks with people where things just get serious and you never know what's gonna happen. Their kiss is kind of awkward, but I think that's kinda the point. It's both of their first kisses. I can almost see why people want to ship them together. Though this does not make the SETI thing they do later on in the series any more tolerable. But yeah, this moment in particular is kind of cute. It doesn't feel like this scene or this episode was meant to drum up viewers by teasing, will they kiss? Ooh, who knows? That may or may not have been how Nick advertised it, but it genuinely feels like a natural conclusion to a natural plot. It doesn't feel shoehorned in. Speaking of shoehorned in, that is exactly the problem the Fred episode had. In that episode, they didn't have anything that resembled any sort of real talk about the situation. Instead, they just shoehorned in a bunch of scenes of the iCarly crew hanging out with Fred because they knew that they could market the heck out of it for views. Though interestingly enough, I Kiss reached 6 million viewers, whereas I Meet Fred only had 5 million. So in the end, the better episode did win out. But yeah, that's the big problem. I don't think in I Meet Fred they were really aware of the story they were telling. I don't really think they were thinking about the implications of what was happening to Freddy, I think they just wanted to do a bunch of silly slapstick and create a situation where the main characters were fighting with the guest star. Kind of like how they do the forced superhero battles whenever they do superhero crossover comics. In contrast, this episode had a very clear vision of the message that it wanted to get across. There's nothing wrong with having never been kissed and that it's dangerous to reveal secrets like that over the internet. I saw some people in my comments section complaining that the kids picking on Freddy was too cruel and mean-spirited and all that, and I gotta tell you, this is how kids are. Kids will obsess over this sort of petty thing. Yeah, it's really not a big deal if you haven't been kissed yet, especially at that age, but kids unfortunately will make a big deal out of that. Luckily though, in most cases, this will only happen for like a few weeks and then kids will move on to the next big gossipy thing going on. Oh, and I didn't even mention the subplot yet. So the subplot is about Spencer wanting to be on a professional football team. Ultimately, the story is really lame. There is actually no conclusion to it. It basically just to amounts to one scene of Sam accidentally throwing a football right between Spencer's legs, another scene of Carly trying to convince Spencer to work out more by being his coach, and a third scene of Gibby trying to motivate Spencer into working out. It just basically ends with Spencer tricking Gibby into taking a bus across town instead of staying and training him. And while it would have been nice to get some sort of conclusion to that, it honestly didn't need it. It's just a goofy, physical, lighthearted subplot to be countered with the more serious A story. Is it funny? I think there was at least one or two gags that I cracked a smile on, and I could definitely see a lot of people liking the other jokes that I didn't laugh at in this episode. It's just Spencer being a doofus working out. It's a lot more believable and a lot more actually funny than Spencer goofing around with an ostrich. So to sum it all up, little physical harm actually happens to Freddy, aside from the very beginning when Sam holds him down. Sam actually acknowledging that she went too far and sometimes she does go too far and in some sort of capacity she does like Freddy, a real problem being portrayed realistically and not just for the sake of comedy, a decent subplot, a whole scene without any sort of laugh track, a pretty good parody of those cheesy teen movies, and a genuinely sweet ending with a good message to boot. It's a good episode. I was surprised at how much I really like this. And it's definitely episodes like this that really endear you to these characters and really care about what happens to them. It also proves that they can do so much better than garbage like I meet Fred. Pie Guy rules out.